Hey, it's Brian here from quantlabs.net. I, I want to put this, um, we'll call it war, technology war, to bed. Um, I think it's time that uh, I move on from these subjects because I've spent a lot of time and a lot of energy in this area over the last, let's say, two years. Now, if people are wanting to be, we'll call them quant newbies, quant wannabes, there's a variety of tools that people will use and go on about what's better and what's faster and what's more efficient and blah blah blah. At the end of the day, one of the best uh, books that I've read about this topic is from Max Dama. Dama, my pronunciation. Dana. I'm, I, but this guy has has a very easily put together a, a quick summary of the whole thing. It doesn't really matter. What matters is your strategies and your algorithms and your your your, your uh, trading models. That's what matters. It doesn't matter what it's written in. So at the end of the day, um, efficiency is important. I'm going to talk about each and what I think of each tool that can be used when you develop a trading strategy or trading model. There's essentially right now two research, maybe three research uh, languages or, or, or tools or platforms that could be used for uh, researching and building trading strategies, models, and algorithms. The first one that's obviously getting very popular is R. R is huge, it's free, it's powerful, it's got lots of great uh, packages, it's got lots of um, great uh, programming uh, tools that are part of the R platform. Um, my issue with R is pretty well just one. Uh, with our studio, which is like an amazing integrated development environment, IDE, like a Visual Studio and Eclipse, um, but this uh, does not have really, at this point, a really solid a visual debugger. I, I, I'm a person that likes to debug, I like to control all my source code and whatever I'm working with. It just, it takes away all that black box um, dilemma that a lot of people face when you're working with some kind of API or programming interface that you're tied to and that you, you're limited to. But when you have the power of, of source code and a really good, powerful, uh, productive debugger, especially for my needs, I'm, I'm just saying for me, is I like to do everything visual. It just makes me more productive. Other people could say that they like their command line stuff and that's great. I, I don't live on the command line. I like to see things. I'm just a visual person, I guess. Um, but this is one of the big challenges with R. Uh, it's the performance is quite good. Um, it's mature, but you know it's free. And the problem is, if if you're going to start trading millions of dollars of capital on a tool like open source, especially something like an R, not saying it will or won't happen, but it's a form of a risk where if something blows up because of a badly written package or something wonky goes on, you're stuck. You have no one to call and you, you know, especially when it comes to client uh, investors, if something bad happens, they want to have, they're going to talk about liability, uh, just the way it is. So who do you sue in the world of R? So that brings me to my next uh, language. I'm, I'm just going to move into Python here. Now I've never really worked with Python, so for me to say what works and what doesn't work. Uh, it's easily the most powerful, most popular language out there, no doubt, from what I've seen. Again, open source, a lot of people go on about the integration with, uh, uh, with C, or C++, and it looks powerful. I can't really comment on it, but now these are comments coming from um, Ernie Chan. His dilemma is, is that he feels that Python doesn't do a very adequate job in vectorization. So that is one strike against Python. Um, and that's one of the reasons why a guy like Ernie Chan does not use a Python or an R. Um, and that will bring him to my personal favorite as well as uh, R, uh, as well as Ernie Chan likes to use is, is, is MATLAB for MathWorks. Um, when you blend these two products together, these are, are uh, Python and R are really good if you cannot afford a commercial product like MATLAB. Um, MATLAB is expensive, but it's more used on an institutional level. But there's a lot of powerful things you get with it. You get um, the Simulink, you get um, 
paralyzation, powerful paralyzation. You get a production server, which is fairly new. It's amazing. It's like a Tomcat or a HTTP server. You get ways to extend uh, your your core MATLAB algorithms, and you can co-generate them in a C, C++, or even FPGA deployment. Very powerful. Um, just go online and, and, and search my YouTube channel, and, and you'll see what my why I have a major love for for uh, MATLAB. Not only that, but it's got a visual debugger. It's really good. The, the programming environment's really, really top notch. Um, as well as one thing I like, and I don't talk a lot about, is a MATLAB mobile here. Obviously, there's uh, this Android solution, but um, uh, I've talked in another video about my iPad, and they do have a MATLAB mobile for um, for iPad. And I actually have a YouTube video on on, on that demo working, connecting into my uh, home server. So it's it's really good, um, and I really like it. Uh, and again, when it comes to working capital in the millions. Uh, it, there's no doubt that uh, people will feel comfortable um, with with a solid tool that's been properly uh, QA'd uh, for quality in, in all their toolboxes. And as I said, if something does happen, which most likely won't because of some weird bug, there's liability there, and now they have somebody to go after, and that would be obviously MathWorks. You know, just saying. Um, and then that brings me into uh, C++. A lot of a lot of people use C++ for HFT because it's fast. It is the world's fastest language. Um, I like C++. I've worked with it. Um, I just find it it's, gets kind of overkill with the object-oriented programming, and you know we're just trying to work on algorithms. We're not trying to build websites or trying to do crazy engineering things. Um, C++ is quite good, powerful. I like C, preferably, um, so anything I co-generate, I'd rather co-generate in a C, not C++, just it's simpler. Um, it's probably one of the first languages most people learn when they start programming, uh, and it's really good for algorithms as well. So C++ is good, C is easier. That brings me now to my, um, my trading platform. Now, I'm sure many of you may know of TradeLink. Um, and TradeLink is really good for the ability that there's a lot of things you can do out of box. Now, there's two, seems to be two versions of it. It's kind of confusing for people. Is um, there's the uh, newer TradeLink application called uh, Gleam, where you can easily build uh, trading strategies visually. Uh, it's a good tool. I've kind of played with it, um, and, and I'm sure it does a job. It's a commercial product. Um, and there's the open source components of, of TradeLink as well as what I call the legacy um, components. Uh, there being, um, uh, you know, the ability where you can custom generate your, your your trading strategies within a DLL and then drop that DLL into the different components of TradeLink. And again, it comes with because it's open source. You get the source code. It's all done in C Sharp, .NET for Windows. Um, it's powerful stuff, um, so you can easily integrate either R or, or, or Python or even MATLAB into TradeLink because of it. Um, that's what I intend to do. Now, I've worked with uh, C Sharp enough. I'm not an expert at it, but it, I, from what I've seen, it's a very powerful language that can be used for building some really neat, powerful uh, trading platforms. Uh, when my, f uh, my fam famous friend now, Called the London Quant built one is is doing doing quite well with it. Um, his his system's done in, in C sharp. So at the end of the day, no matter what your research tool or whatever you're more comfortable with, you can integrate R into something like a TradeLink. You can integrate MATLAB models into TradeLink, and you can also integrate Python in a TradeLink. Now, I've done the R using RCPP. Um, and then building DLLs and da 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 da. Um, using that methodology for R sessions in a C++ environment, it takes a little while for a couple of good milliseconds or microseconds to open up the R session. It's good for um, basically uh, connect, uh, you know, f for monitoring something, and you're just going to load up and start your R session once. It's fine for that, but for a live production environment, I wouldn't recommend using 
R and, and trying to bridge it into another platform like a trade link or another open source trading platform. There might be other solutions, I don't know. Um, but from, that's my experience thus far. Um, again, I'm not going to get in these technology wars. I'm just trying to find the best solution for me. Also with uh, Python, um, again, I can't really comment on this. I know that there is this um, integration, a way you can integrate C++ with Python, so I really can't comment. It seems to be pretty popular. Is it fast enough? I don't know. Um, obviously, there's C++. Um, but the path I, I like the best that I've seen is code generating from MATLAB, be it through the MATLAB compiler, be it through the Simulink compiler, or coder, uh, and the MATLAB, uh, sorry, not compiler, coder, which will compile a MATLAB uh, source into uh, into C++, or, or, and then you create a DLL, and then you can drop that into, that can be read into, uh, and be talked to, uh, where it can talk with TradeLink. So uh, that path I like because it's, it's more native. You're not doing any kind of weird bridging technology like with an RCPP or whatnot. Um, so uh, I'm just more comfortable doing it this way. And that's for a live trading environment. So that's pretty well it in a nutshell. Um, and uh, for me, it uh, looks like I'll be using TradeLink as my way to execute my order management system using both uh, IQ Feed as well as um, as Interactive Brokers is my broker. Uh, you can find a ton of videos that I've done on that and different ways to go about doing that as well as using my math, my MATLAB to generate um, a trading models be it through the MATLAB M scripting language itself or using the Simulink which is very powerful and you can find various uh, ways I do that as well. Uh, it's very productive to use uh, Simulink. Um, and I do intend to use some R, not a lot, but there's some special instances where I've seen some uh, trading strategies and models from R that are pretty powerful. Um, and I know some projects that I'm interested in is using Python, so I wouldn't be surprised I'll be using some Python as well. But my primary path and choice of technology, if people need to know, is, is obviously is using TradeLink as well as MathWorks. Um, for code generation, and then using R to integrate into uh, into TradeLink uh, uh, or somehow Python as well. But I'll, I'll reveal those if it's new. Um, if you follow me for a while, there's different ways. Now you probably notice I'm not talking a lot about Java. Um, the reason I, I I I'm a former Java developer for many years. Java is a very powerful language up until Java seven. Um, I've been kind of turned off by Java the last year or so since Oracle's kind of taken over the reins of Java with security breaches. They've been getting a lot of um, headlines over it. So um, it's just one of those languages I, I, you know, I've already got three, four languages to choose from. Um, so I'm treating Java, on, putting it on a lower um, priority. But there's so many interesting Java pro or projects uh, for trading that are done in Java and you have no choice but to use Java. So don't be surprised if you see Java. Um, now if you're all new to the world of programming and probably a lot of you are, I would stick obviously with the, the free um, tools or languages out there. R, R is a really powerful one to start with. My uh, upcoming school has a few R algorithms and projects that I'm working with. Python's a good one. It's it's obviously more powerful, but I, as I said, I haven't really focused too much on Python. And obviously MATLAB is just where I'm at. More advanced stuff can be done in MATLAB. It can be done a lot faster. So at the end of the day, as Mac Dan, Dana, Dana said, uh, your programming language is not what matters. What matters is the, the, the algorithm and the trading model. That's what's important. These, these languages are so secondary and so lower priority. Um, but um, yeah, it's just it's interesting. I thought I'd put this out there and I thought, you know what, this, I'm hoping this is going to be the last video or talk I can do about all these languages because you get kind of tired of them. It's time to start focusing on trading models and algorithms and stuff. But um, yeah, that's the end of that. Have a good day.